With WKUF News, I'm David Jackson for Thursday, May 19th, 2016. The new Karagnandi Water Authority pipeline is still on schedule to be completed this summer. However, once the pipeline is completed, it would still be months before Flint residents will see the water. Gary Ridley of the Flint Journal reports that Jeff Wright, the Genesee County Drain Commissioner, as well as the KWA's CEO, said on Wednesday that although the new pipeline is on schedule, it will not be until 2017 before our new water treatment plant is online. The new water treatment plant, according to Wright, will be used to comply with the new EPA rules that require additional testing and treatment before the new water supply can be pumped into the, into the city, which apparently will take up to six additional months. Wright also says that in order to meet the testing and backup requirements, an additional three-mile stretch will be needed, which is a source of controversy in regards to who will be paying the additional bill. According to Gary Ridley of the Flint Journal, neither the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality or Governor Rick Snyder's office were available for comment. However, according to Ron Fonger of the Flint Journal, the governor's office says that the current budget proposal at least includes enough money to fund the city's connection to the Detroit water system until the KWA system is ready to use. A new standard has been developed to aid in preventing the bacteria that causes Legionnaire's disease. In a press release from Genesee County, the American Society of Heating, Refrigeration, and Air Conditioning Engineers, or ASHRAE, has created a voluntary framework for proactively managing building water systems to prevent the bacteria from growing. The state of Michigan says that the spread of the bacteria is more common in the warm summer months, adding, however, that most healthy people do not get sick after being exposed to Legionella. A research team from Virginia Tech on their website, flintwaterstudy.org, reiterates that they agree with the Michigan DHS in saying that it is now as safe to shower in Flint City water as it is to shower in any other city. Several news outlets have reported that the recent outbreak that may have killed 12 people could have been linked to the switch to the Flint River. A study completed last October by the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services added that at least half of the reported cases likely originated in a single-area hospital. And as a precaution, health officials advise that residents with common risk factors, such as a compromised immune system or weakened lungs who develop pneumonia-like symptoms, should speak to their doctors. This coming weekend, the Genesee County Health Department is hosting an educational presentation for local building facilities managers in an effort to promote the proposed measures that should prevent future cases of Legionnaires. The U.S. Senate unanimously passed a bill Tuesday that will allow the families of those who died from attacks on September 11, 2001, to sue Saudi Arabia for its alleged role. The Huffington Post reports that in an apparently stinging rebuke to the White House's efforts to bury the legislation, Senators John Cornyn of Texas and Chuck Schumer of New York brought up their Justice Against Sponsors of Terrorism Act and successfully won a quick vote in the Senate. The bill would prevent countries like Saudi Arabia from invoking their legal immunity in U.S. courts for their alleged ties to terrorist groups. The bill moves to the House for a vote. However, Josh Earnest, press secretary for President Obama, told reporters that it is difficult to imagine that the president would sign this bill after the president has been campaigning for months to block the legislation. According to the New York Times, in response to such a bill, the Saudis threatened to sell up to $750 billion in U.S. assets, warning of economic fallout if Congress passes the bill. Saudi officials have long denied involvement in the 2001 plot, and the so-called 9-11 Commission used specifically tailored wording to conclude that the Saudis had no involvement. Critics, however, note that the language used could have been designed to protect Saudi involvement, adding that the pages holding the conclusions on the subject have not been released publicly. And finally, a new overtime rule was unveiled yesterday that will make millions of middle-income workers eligible for overtime pay. The Washington Post reports that the rule would boost the pay of over 4 million workers effective December 1st and caps off a long-running effort by the Obama administration to aid low- and middle-income workers. The bill would make more than a third of full-time salaried employees who work more than 40 hours per week eligible for overtime pay. Advocates of the rule change argue that some salaried employees who work 50 and 60 hours per week are making less than minimum wage and does not reflect the current level of income to keep a family of four out of poverty. Opponents, however, like Linda Herrig of the University of Tennessee, say that they would have to raise tuition in order to afford the overtime incurred by their non-administrative staff. 
For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.